Jerry of the circus. For Jerry of the Circus. Oh, there you are, Mr. Randall. I'm glad you got here. Yeah. I tell you, I've been over and over these accounts and checked with the bank, and I'm sure we didn't take in one bad bill in Evansville. I don't say. Well, that hardly seems possible with so much funny money in that town, and the very day we were there, too. Uh, if you ask me, it looks like a plant. Well, how do you mean? Look, the town is flooded with counterfeit. Yeah? And it happens the very day the circus plays the town. Not the day before, or the day after. Well? And the circus doesn't take in one phony. Well, of course, we did take in some counterfeit and fought them. Yeah, but that counterfeit was being passed around there for several days. But if you remember, the most of it was planted the day the fair closed. Yeah, it's a pretty smart trick, too. Less danger of getting caught the last day. Yeah, but it also was the last day of the circus. Jim Bennett, you're not suggesting that someone in this circus is passing out that counterfeit. Uh, looks mighty like it, don't it? Oh, but Jim, you know our folks. Why, why most of them have been with me for years. Uh, I know them better than my own family. Sure, I know that as well as anyone. But it looks to me like whoever these criminals are, they're trying to make it look like the circus was to blame. Huh. Jim, I believe you've hit on something. I always did say you could think faster than anybody else in the business. Of all the low-down sneaking... Now pardon me, buddy. Yeah, what you want? Well, I'm looking for Mr. Randall. Could you direct me to him? Well, what you want with him? I'm the manager. Well, my name's Hadley. I've been sent up here by the Allendale Police Station. Oh, 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 yes, I was expecting you. I'm Randall. Uh, come around to the side door here. Yes, sir. Be right with you. I'm sorry, boss. I thought he might be one of those busybodies always taking up your time, you well, know. You're perfectly right, Jim. Listen, if you didn't get rid of half these people that bother me in every town, I'd, well, I'd never get any work done. Well, Mr. Randall, were you able to check on the money? Yeah, step right into the wagon, Hadley. Uh, this is Jim Bennett, my right-hand man. Howdy, Bennett. Glad to meet you, Hadley. Uh, Jim's just gone through the whole day's take very carefully, and uh, we can't seem to spot one bad bill. The counterfeit's been coming in in $10 mostly, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, Mr. Randall, I, I'm afraid I'll have to hang around here today. Well, how do you mean? Well, the chief said he wanted me to work here in the box office with your ticket seller and have a couple of plain clothes men stay in the crowd. If any phonies come through the window, I can tip the plain clothes men to follow whoever's passing them. Well, that's fair enough. I'll be glad to cooperate. Any bad money picked up in this town yet? No, and there's not going to be if we can help it. Huh, reports from Fordham and Evansville certainly should give you the drop on those guys if they pull any phony business in Lisburg. I hope so. We've notified the main stores and hotels in town, but it's not so easy. There's a convention here, and it's pretty hard to check. Yes, yes, I, I heard there was a convention here from all over the state. Mm, guess that won't hurt our business none. <laughs> yeah, I hope to tell you. <laughs> well, I've got to check on Belko's new act going on this afternoon. Uh, you're not wasting any time taking Belko out of the sideshow and putting him on the parade, huh? Mm, no, sir. <laughs> I'm afraid the major will blow up if I let Belko hang around the sideshow much longer. <laughs> I, I hear Belko went around to the major after going through his routine for you this morning, and then he gave that midget apoplexy with his bragging. <laughs> <laughs> well, make yourself at home, Hadley. I'll be back after the parade. And by then we'll know whether anything is coming in during the... Uh, three general admission, please. Yes, sir. Oh, well, business is picking up. Well, I'll be going. Oh, Randall. Say, I'm glad I caught you. Oh. Uh, have you got a minute? Well, sure thing, Kelly. I've got to see Belko before the show starts, but... Well, how are your patients? Uh, that's what I want to see you about. Oh, that's so? The hey, doc seemed quite pleased with their progress this morning. Uh, so am I. Maud ate a good meal again this morning. Uh, now how about the cat? Oh, it's getting along all right. Uh, poor thing was half-starved. 
But something's wrong with his hindquarters. Uh -huh. You mind dropping by and seeing it? Oh, of course not. I'd be glad to. Jerry's over there now, trying to get the cat to crawl over to the edge of the cage. Well, if it can't walk, how did it get away from the edge? <laughs> I don't blame you for asking. You know, that crazy new has gone berserk. After we left, he nudged the cat over into the middle of the cage and is standing guard over it. Oh. Won't let anyone get near it. We ain't even been able to get food to it. Hmm. Uh, and listen, when Maud's worked up, it's no good for anyone to get near those horns of hers. Oh, it's a wonder she hasn't killed the cat. Yeah, she will if she won't let us feed it. Hmm. Uh, news are such cumbersome beasts with those big hooves. And I don't think we need worry about her stepping on the cat. So far, she's been terribly careful. Won't take those huge brown eyes of her off the stray for a minute. Well, I've heard of lots of strange animal friendships, but this takes the cake. <laughs> a new and an alley cat. Oh, well, here we are, boss. Uh, right over here. Uh, hi there, Jerry. Uh, having any luck? No, not a bit. But I got an idea. Yeah? What is it? Well, as long as we can't get the cat over here to eat, maybe we can get her food over there. No use it starving to death. Say, that's not a bad idea at that, Jerry. But then that won't help the doctor much. He wants to look it over. But at least it'll keep the animal from starving. Mm, well, maybe it's all for the best. You know, animals have great recuperative powers. Ray, uh, uh, what's that word? <laughs> recuperative, Jerry. That means to get well. Oh, you know, Jerry, there's a tremendous life force in the body itself. Often, if left alone, it seems to heal the body better than anything else. Oh, I see. Yeah, I've often noticed that with animals. Like, when Rags is sick, all he wants is to be left alone. Well, of course, in the native element, animals instinctively know what to do. Sure. Often, Rags runs around and begins eating a lot of grass when he's been kind of sick. You see, most animals know what's good for them when they're left to their own instincts. Yeah, but it's different with circus animals, Jerry, especially in cages. You see, they're not free to roam around and pick up what's good for them. So we humans have to use what little we know to try to help them out. Yeah, and I'll tell you, sometimes we feel pretty helpless. Yeah, well, I guess Jerry suggested the only thing you can do for this cat, Kelly. And I'll tell you one thing, those two animals will certainly be a big attraction together like that. Yeah, might be a good idea to have one of the guards stationed here to explain to the folks how the cat saved the life of a new. Say, that'll be great. The kids will be crazy about that. Mm -hmm. and, and he might add that the uh, new won't let anyone near the cat. You better not mention the cat's back is hurt. No use upsetting the crowd. I kind of have a hunch it'll get well by itself if the cat gets enough rest and food. We hope so. Well, if there's nothing else in your mind, Kelly, I'd better go over and get Belko started off on the right foot. Uh, so long. Hey, Jiminy, it's almost time for the folks to be coming in. I say, look, here come the towners now. Well, I, I intend to feed in this cat. And I'd better get in my uniform. I'll be back after the show, Kelly. Okay, Jerry. Okay. Right this way, folks, right this way. Last chance to buy your tickets for the big show. Sorry, lady, no reserve seats left. Only a few general admissions. Yeah, it looks like a sellout tonight, Bennett. Yeah, the convention must be here in full force, Hadley. Only a few general admissions left now. Don't miss this chance to see the most gigantic show ever presented to you, the lucky citizen of Day. I wish Mr. Randall would get here. Did you tell him about... Oh, here, here he comes now. Excuse me a minute, Bennett. I'll catch up with him. I'll see you later. Okay. Hurry, folks, hurry, hurry. Only a few choice seats left. Hi there, tonight. Mr. Randall. Oh, oh, Mr. Randall. Yes. Who wants me? Oh, oh, there you are, Hadley. I was looking for you. Uh, do you mind if we get off this midway? I'd like a few quiet words with you. Oh, of course. Here, uh, duck behind this tent. It'll be quieter. Good. <laughs> yeah, this is better. Well, I suppose you've heard the news. No, no, nothing outside the fact that no counterfeit was taken in during the matinee. Oh, you haven't heard then. Well, the chief just sent word over that about 40 bad tens were reported about dinner time tonight. No. Where? Did they, did they catch anyone? No. Seems that whoever was spreading the paper was working fast all over town. And not one person spotted the bad money? Not at the time. They worked during the rush hour and evidently waited till the stores were filled with customers. Oh, this is terrible. Oh, what about Bennett? Did uh, he pick up any of that phony money at the ticket window tonight? Yeah. Two bad tens dribbled in. Huh. I happen to know both men, garage men, who got stuck themselves and didn't realize they were passing out bad paper. Well, did you explain it to them? Sure. Uh, they knew me anyhow. Well, I'm glad of that, because as a rule, if there's any mix-up at the ticket window, the towners think the circus is trying to cheat them. And uh, there's one more thing. The chief sent a word that as long as this thing has happened the day your circus is in town, you'll have to take me on. Well, what do you mean? Well, you may not be carrying the guilty party, but the law isn't taking any more chances. 
The chief wants uh, someone with this circus who can watch things from the inside. Why, of course. Anything I can do to help, Hadley, but I'm afraid you're chasing up the wrong tree. Most of my people have been with me for years, and I'd trust them anywhere. I know. But the way things are, you can see why the chief thinks that, well, it looks pretty bad. And, yes, uh, yes, of course. But how will I explain your presence to the performers? I, I don't suppose you want to be known as an officer. <laughs> I should say not. Oh, just say I'm an old friend, thinking of putting money in the show for next season and say that, uh, yeah, I've got it. Yeah? Tell them I've always wanted to be a clown. You're taking me on a while to allow me to get acquainted with the outfit. But are you a clown? Sure, I can do anything. <laughs> say, I, I've used more disguises in my career than most actors. <laughs> I can well believe that. Well, what do you think you can do best? Well, I tell you, I'm a practical joker by nature. Huh? Why don't you let me be one of those clowns that mix with the audience and kid them? Oh, you mean a heckler? A uh, what? Well, that's the that's the name we have for that kind of work, heckler clown. That's a good idea, Hadley. Sure. Don't worry. I'll be so good you'll hate to let me go. <laughs> Maybe you'll be so crazy about the circus by then you won't want to leave. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't thought of that. Well, if you're working for me, you might as well come on and meet the gang now. Sure thing. I guess my old name's good enough. Just introduce me as Joe Hatton. All right, come through here. I'll introduce you to Bumps. He's one of my best clowns. Uh, I'll let him help you with, well, anything you anything may need. Delighted. Say, I think I'm going to like this job. Well, I hope so. And now, Mr. Randall, if you'll furnish me with a complete list of everyone connected with the circus, we can go over it pretty thoroughly. Probably we can check most of the folks' office being beyond report. Oh, I'm sure we can. Anyhow, we'll narrow it down to the most likely one. I can begin my investigations immediately. Yeah, I'll, I'll have a list ready for you right after the show, Hadley. Yeah. Oh, just a minute. Here comes a youngster I want you to meet. Uh, Jerry! Jerry, come here a minute. Oh, hello, Mr. Randall. Uh, I want you to meet Joe Hadley, Jerry. Glad to meet you. Uh, glad to meet you, Jerry. Jerry, uh, will you take Mr. Hadley over to your wagon? He's joining the show, and I, I want him to meet Bumps and the whole crowd. Sure, I'd be glad to. I thought of something I'd better attend to. Uh, you'll be in good hands, Hadley. I'll explain to Bumps later. Uh, okay? It's all right with me, Mr. Randall. Then I'll see you after the show? Yes, yes. Uh, remember, we leave town tonight at uh, one twenty. The last section pulls out then, so if you've got anything to attend to, you'd better get it taken care of. Thanks, Mr. Randall. I will. Goodbye, Mr. Randall. Don't worry about Mr. Hadley. I'll see you meet everyone. Well, that's nice and friendly of you, Jerry. Ah, uh, say, we got a swell troop. You'll like Bumps. The clown? Uh-huh. How long you been with the circus, Jerry? Who, me? Only this season, but... Listen, Mr. Hadley, I'm going to spend the rest of my life with the circus, if I can. 